welcome aboard Just Jets with your captain, Matt O'Leary. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hello and welcome to Just Jets episode 117. What is going on? I am Matt O'Leary hanging out with you. We have a ton to get into today. First and foremost, we are going to get through one of the dumbest lawsuits I've ever heard of in my entire life. We'll do your voicemails. But before all of that, got to talk about Manscaped. Summer's coming. The sun is shining. Shirts are popping off. Your balls are smooth. You heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here to make sure your beach balls are as smooth as Floridian sand. In summer, you want to kill some cold beer and barbecues. Don't kill the vibes with your pubes peeking out of your swim trunks. Ew! That's why Manscaped has their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive head first into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with my code JETS20. That is J-E-T-S-2-0 for 20% off. And free shipping from Manscaped. Get yourself something nice. Also, speaking of nice things, the Sauce Gardener shirts are in. If you haven't gotten one, you are sleeping on the job. Comfy, nice. Link down below in the description to the store for your Sauce Gardener shirts. Also dropped two others. (gasps) Not sauce related, but rookie class related. We had a couple of requests for Brees Hall. And Jeremy Ruckert, so we're going with the Long Island's hometown hero for Jeremy Ruckert and going with Brees Lightning, figure that one out, uh, for Brees Hall. So super excited to get into it. Uh, And hopefully you pick it up. It's been a blast. They've been selling well, so I appreciate that. It it helps the channel. It helps me. All positive things. And it, it brings me a smile when I see people excited to get their Sauce Gardner shirts. I love it. It's comfy. They're very comfy. So let's talk about the dumbest lawsuit I've ever heard of in my entire life. And you're like, Matt, is this a lawyer show? Did I subscribe to the wrong podcast here? I thought this was a Jets channel. Well, fans are suing the Jets and the Giants to remove New York from their name because they play in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is a storyline from this past week. Okay. This bothered me. Why did it bother me so much that I wanted to open with it on this podcast? And like, we're going to get to real jet stuff too. There's questions. I t- Every week I talk so much jet stuff. I, I, we want to do a little bit of a rant and a little fun here at the start. And a little stupidity at the start. I just play 11 miles from New York City. They, they are 11 miles. This is, this is a, a semantics argument here with dropping the New York name and picking up New Jersey because they are in, in, in Jersey. It's stupid. It's dumb. It's so stupid. Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills play in Orchard Park, which is about 11 miles outside of Buffalo. So the Buffalo Bills have to change their name to the Orchard Park Bills. How about the Dallas Cowboys? Dallas, the big star. One of the most iconic logo in football. A probably top two recognize like right. It's Yankees one, Cowboys two are probably the most recognizable sports logos or sports brands here in the United States. America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. They don't play in Dallas. They play in Arlington, Texas. It's 20 miles away from Dallas. San Francisco 49ers. Their beautiful new Levi Stadium. It's got to be in San Francisco, right? Wrong, Santa Clara. That's that's the big thing. That's the big one. Is the, the Jets and the biggest issue right now that we have to do is we're creating a lawsuit and trying to get like it's millions upon it might even be up to billions of dollars they are looking for to change the name to New Jersey Jets or New Jersey Giants. That is never going to happen. It's not. And what, like, why? What's the difference if they play in New Jersey and are branded as the, the you know, they're not going to want to hear this. If you're, if you're, if you're from New Jersey, you're probably not going to want to hear this, but from a branding perspective, they want the New York name. 
Because the biggest city in the world, the city that never sleeps, that's what they want. And then they say, well, why don't you play in the city? Where? I guess the, say the, the works for Madison Square Garden. I guess, I guess theoretically it does. That's a, what, 20,000 seat arena versus a, a, a thousand seat, a hundred thousand seat uh, football stadium. They're going to do one on the West Side Highway. I don't know how good that would have been. In Manhattan, that would make it, that would be the big one. You, you'd lose it. Forget tailgating. That That's out the window. I see so many times. I can't tell you how many people co comment. And like, I understand like where they're coming from, wanting your own own stadium and like want to put it back in New York. Where? In Queens? Knock down all the uh the what do you call it? The garages by City Field and build a MetLife Stadium there. Okay, yeah, in theory that'd be nice, sure. But logistically speaking, does it make sense to have two a hundred thousand seat stadiums? within 20 miles of each other because then the the you're using it what for the jets you'd be using it for your eight or nine regular season games and your one or two preseason games so for like nine or ten days out of the, days out of the year because they play once a week nine or ten days out of the year it's being used for the jets and sure you have your concerts and stuff like that but it's is Taylor Swift coming to Jet Stadium and then Giant Stadium? Like on that world on your world tour, you hitting both? Does it make sense too? Logistically speaking, the, I, I I don't know. And, and what are you use losing? Like I've seen people say that New Jersey's been footing the bill for years for these teams. Have they? Have they? Because MetLife Stadium was not publicly funded. So I, I, what, what's the, be, what's the benefit other than if you're from New Jersey and want the pride of saying this team plays in Jersey and they're the Jersey jets or they're the Jersey giants or they're, they're both the Jersey jets and Jersey giants. Why, why rebrand? Don't rebrand. That's stupid. This is a semantics argument about 11 miles. That's what we're talking about. But oh, oh my God! At least with the, the Dallas Cowboys, that they're that's still in Texas is not crossing state lines, crossing city lines, city limits. <laughs> I can't believe this is real. If I had that much time on my hands, I I don't think I could even come up with something that stupid to do. Coming up with a lawsuit, just I want to sue the Jets and Giants. I'll give you. A, how about this? Why don't we come up with better reasons to sue the Jets or the Giants? But we're, we're a Jets show. I can think of so many other reasons why I wanted to uh, why I want to sue the Jets. I don't really. This is a joke, people. Personal damages to my health and well being. What do you think? There. How much do you think I can get? How many millions can I get from the Jets for all the mental anguish they've put me through over the years? How about that? I'd much rather that than a stupid name change. We got them. The Jersey Jets now. This is so stupid. That's what I want to do. I want to sue them because they missed the playoffs so much. I want to sue them because Woody Johnson. How about this? This rubbed me the wrong way this week. Here's something we can get into from this week. We've we've done we've done the schedule stuff to death already on this channel. That's why I'm not doing another uh, schedule run through. We got and some of these questions obviously from the callers. They're going to be on the the schedule and stuff like that, but. Woody Johnson was like, oh, out, outside of the schedule release, we're going to have this amazing surprise for you, Jet fans. The big surprise was a seven-game package. What? That's the drop that you like. Basically, almost, you don't have, we don't have a full, you're not a full season ticket holder. You only have tickets for seven of the eight games or whatever the hell, how many home games they play? I think it's eight. You only have tickets for seven of the eight games. No preseason games or whatever, whatever it is. You have eight games or seven games instead. <laughs> it's more family affordable. Do you still have to pay the PSL? How about that? Can we sue over the PSLs? That'd be a much better reason to sue. 
saying I, I have to fork over 10 grand to seat or whatever the hell it was for a PSL first before I have the right to buy my season tickets. Can I sell for that, a sue for that? Because that's just stupidity. <laughs> oh, God. We've reached the months of May here. And the funny thing is, there's so many. This is something that I love too from this time of year. When the, the comment section will, there's always one. And it'll be like, oh, we're really reaching for content here. Even though, like, this, this channel or all the Jets channels, we do content every single day for free year round. Uh, and it's always in the comments on, on these kinds of videos. And we'll see. I'm recording this in advance. So I have no idea what it's going to be like. But I bet the numbers for this are pretty good because all those times on all those other kinds of other videos, they do well. They always do. Like right now, there's there's examples of it as is. I want to switch it over now. Um, we talked about, oh, yeah, the schedule rumors and Sauce Gardner getting his number. One of the biggest feud videos of, that we've had this past month. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's funny. I love this time of year. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> uh, sorry for going off the rails there. Just want, needed to rant. Get it out. I need to get all my... I have the, all this pent-up frustration over the uh, the argument about the Jersey Jets that I'm just I'm lashing out now. Sorry, that's on me. But this is what you get for the, <laughs> for the Just Jets podcast. Let's see your voicemails up next. We're going to go with Bill from Georgia to get us started. I'm Bill. Bill D'Angelo from Georgia. Long-time Jet fan. I'm there for the first Super Bowl. And my question is, simply, if Zach Wilson manages to really master this offense, which I really have a gut feeling it does, is it possible we can contend for a playoff spot? Talk to you soon. Bye. Go Jets. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for calling in, man. Oh, I would love it. Um now, I think he's going to take a pretty sizable jump forward. But let's say there's a massive leap forward, and he goes from like, I don't know, he's probably like a bottom five quarterback last year. And let's say he's pushing like top 10. Now, I think th I'm not saying before, I, I already see the comment section now, running, flooding to, to type on the computer at me, saying, what? You can't possibly put that expectation on Zach. Let's play the game for a second. If he does, can they go 10 and 7, 11 and 6? Yeah, maybe. And at that point, you're probably fighting for a wild card spot. With how good the AFC West West is, I understand all that. The AFC North, I get it. It's it's contingent on Zach. If he takes this massive step forward and is pushing a top 10 quarterback, yeah, they're probably going to win some games. But even if he just takes a marginal step, which that's kind of where I'm at. I think he takes a marginal to a slightly above average step. And is like, I don't know, let's say hanging in between the 15th and 20th best quarterback in the league in year two. I think they win seven or eight games. So, um, can we set the bar competitive? Because <laughs> I think they'll be competitive. I think that's what we can say. Playoffs might be a little ambitious unless there's a massive step, but we'll see. I hope so, Bill. I hope you're right. Man, that'd be a blast. That'd be an absolute blast. Let's do uh, Joe from Florida. He wants us to talk about Ulbrich. All right, let's do it. Yo, Matt, this is Joe from Florida. I got a couple questions regarding the defense. Sure. Number one, what do you think of Jeff Ulbrich as a defensive coordinator? Now, we all saw how Mike LaFleur kind of got better as the season went on. He kind of grew into himself and just became a very, what, seem, what seems to be a competent guy. Uh, Jeff Ulbrich, however, had 32nd ranked defense and seemed to only get worse as the time went on. So do you think he's the guy, or do you have any opinions on him at all? Because, I mean, even Rex and Todd Bowles had some pretty competitive defenses with some pretty lackluster talent. And the second part of that question is, how much do you think that these linebackers are going to affect the defense as a whole? The Jets seem to have a pretty good defensive line as of right now, and they seem to have a pretty solid defensive back room as well. But the linebackers, outside of C.J. Mosley, how much do you think they're actually going to affect the overall performance yeah. of this defense? Thank it's you. Uh, let's go Jets. Let's go Mets. And let's go Rangers. <laughs> Love it. Love it. That, so as I'm recording, the Ranger game, Game 7 is on in the background. I always record on Sunday nights. Um, 
I I bet the Rangers tonight. I think the Rangers win uh, Game Seven, and they just tied it. That, that was a crazy sequence that I just witnessed. It was a, a goal from the Penguins that looked like a borderline high stick, and then the Rangers go right back down and tie. Game Seven hockey is the absolute best. Um, it doesn't matter that I I I'm just fan or whatever. I just want to watch elite Game Seven hockey. Like that's that's sick. But as far as the defense goes, um. Old Brick definitely got worse. The funny thing is, do you remember from the first four weeks of the year, there, there was conversations about if Old Brick keeps this up with this defense, he might get head coaching. <laughs> he might get head coaching calls. Uh, and everyone wanted to run Mike LaFleur out of town. Uh, that quickly changed. They did a 180. Now, I'm not saying fire Old Brick, but I definitely think he he's sweating a little bit. The defense will be improved overall, I think. Uh, especially on that defensive line, but you po- you pointed it out, and I think it's a good thing to talk about is the linebacker core. Outside of C.J. Mosley, it leaves a lot to be desired. I know Quincy Williams is a fan favorite. He still has his flaws, um, especially in coverage. Like if you want to say that you know he comes up and stops throwing and makes big plays, okay, yeah, he does, and that probably puts him ahead of some of these other guys on the roster. But they need they need more help at that position badly. And safety. That was something that I would have liked to see them add in the draft. If they're going to rely on LaMarcus Joyner, who's older and didn't play last year, it might be an issue at times. But if you're going to have an issue, I'm glad it's not an edge. Right? I'm glad it's not an issue at edge. I'm glad it's not an issue on the offensive line. I'm glad it's not an issue at tight end or running back or wide receiver. So I'll live with it. I'll suck it up. And I think that's part of the reason why I don't. like This kind of goes back to Bill's original question here. Um, with how far this team could go. I think those positions are part of the reason what's holding them back from being a playoff contender right now. And it's why I think they'll be, you know, an okay middling team this year, but an improved team, which I think is what matters most. And I don't have strong feelings on Ulbrich. Obviously he needs to, the defense as a whole needs to be better, but I don't necessarily have uh, strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, let's go to Brenton from Arkansas. Let's do it. We'll do the second. He called twice. So we're going to do the second one here. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened, but I'll try to, I'll try to be a little bit quicker with my response. But, um, anyway, (laughs) yeah, just like so much has to happen. You know, teams are going to just have to not be as good if we're going to have a chance to make the playoffs this year. But yeah, like again, how long do you think it will take to become, a better, a, just a consistent team that isn't going to be bottom and picking in the top five every single year. But anyway, the second question kind of ties into that. You talk about a lot, like, you want this YouTube thing to be your full-time job in the next few years. And what kind of goals do you set for yourself for that? Because, you know, I mean, you, you're one of my favorite Jet content creators. I know Ian's up there, and just so many other ones are just, like, really – gifted in this thing and they can just know what they're talking about most of the time and you know always look to try to go for both sides and stuff like do you think if two years from now where we're i don't know i'm just gonna throw a scenario first round um buys like we're like that good we're 12 and 4 with well with the added game like we're this really good team and then we're consistent from here you think that your youtube thing is going to blow up so much that it's going to grow from basically uh, a community that only outreaches, you know, handpicked, you know, from Dallas, from Arkansas, Cali, wherever, and then like exclusively New Jersey, New York, to where it's just a, a fire. It's just everything. I hope so. Anyway, I just wanted to get a second voicemail in and just uh, say all that. So yeah, that's all I got to say. All right, go Jets. Yeah, appreciate you calling back. So we'll just for. For brevity here, well, I'll do a, re- a recap because I want to get to as many of these as we can here. So we'll do a recap of the first one. Essentially, what he's asking is how long you think it'll be before the Jets are, you know, consistently good. And I think the foundation is there uh, for them to be, you know, getting to that point. Obviously, I mean, we're going to talk. We talked about it a ton already, but just in general, it, it's going to be dependent on how good Zach becomes, really, because if he's just OK, then it's not going to be sustainable. There'll be times where they're pretty damn good. And then there'll be other years where they're not because, well, again, the, the obvious that the, you have, you're lacking a little bit in the quarterback department at times, but if he's really good, 
we see teams all the or quarterbacks carry teams who have no business being where they are go further. Like we, we see that all the time. So I think it's really most dependent on how Zach does because everyone says, "Oh, the AFC stacked. It's gonna be five years before you're competitive." No, it's dependent on your your quarterback. And I, there's a lot of young players and building block guys that I really like. So I, I think this the 2021 class and the 2022 class are going to be really big. And how they hit and how they develop over the next year or two will say that. I think right now the expectation has to be, like I said, I'm at eight wins right now. I think if they hit eight wins, then that bar gets raised again. And then it's playoffs from there. Be a playoff team. And then you want to stick in that spot. As far as the second part of that, I really hope so for obviously like just personal reasons, but like to be completely transparent and it's not just, it's not me. It's all it's, it's any single, you ask any single jet creator. So in March we did on the month, 186,000 views and April was 170. So those are two really like big, big, big months. But if you go, Let's do November. Like the Jazz pretty much out of it by then, right? At that point. Oh, wait, hang on. 21, 2. I'll put that, put this in just to put it into perspective here. That month did. Oh, something's wrong with my sort. Hang on. Bear with me, guys, ladies and gentlemen. 65,000. So like, I'm, am I grateful that during the football season that I have 65,000 people watching me? Of course. Of course I am. And I've said this before. Like, this is just something that I'm extremely passionate about. I've, I did it for years before I was it, it had, a, had an audience like this or anything. I do it because I, lo- I love doing it. And I really am so appreciative of it. But like the, the drop off from the amount of people that care it's it's a stark and drastic difference like when you're going through game previews and game recaps and the numbers aren't great it's because it's and it's because the team it wasn't that good but on the wild games like for instance like i don't know let's say a game preview does like a thousand views or something like that again like these are just round numbers for I don't know. I have no transparency. I have no other, I'm not hiding anything. It's just, oh, you, the, the information is public. You could just scroll back on the, on the channel and see, but like, let's say, I don't know the preview for Jacksonville Jaguars and jets 1.7 thousand views, but the recap video for the Jets Bucks, which was a crazy ending, four and a half thousand views. Or a good game, right? Okay, so once this is maybe even a better example. One seven on the preview, but on a game the Jets win and where Zach looks pretty good, four and a half, four point five on the recap. But then like you have I don't know. Do we have a, a bad one? Yeah, here you go. Jets Saints in November of last year or December, whenever it was. 1-4 on the preview, 2-7 on the recap. If these views, if people are showing up in, in droves, and again, not, I don't mean, not in a selfish way, in, in just a, people are yearning for more Jets content because they care so much about the team on a week-to-week basis. Yeah, that would be huge for all of us. And all these Jets guys would feel that way. Richie, Ryan, Greenbean, all of them. I want to see all of them grow. I said this on the live stream last night, and if you don't tune in, there's not one this upcoming week. I already explained why on that show, but um, on Sundays, usually I hang out for an hour before recording the show. Um, and I was saying, like, I, I Jet fans are really lucky, I think, and myself included, because I, I consume other people's content that I like, and there's there's a lot of really good fan content. And I think to see the growth, like you see it a lot in the off season. I don't want March and April and May to be my biggest months. I want it to be September through December. Cause that means 
people are caring. I want, and I want it to be January. I don't want it to be February too for playoffs and Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting question. And uh, not a lot of people have asked that before. So sorry for going off on a tangent there. And if you're uninterested and that's in the more behind the scenes stuff, apologies. But yeah, I think that would be huge for all of us. Not not just Not just me, but for this entire Jets community and this entire YouTube community. That would be tremendous. That'd be the best thing to ever happen to us. Uh, let's do Jerry Jet calling in next. Let's do it, man. Matt O'Leary, this is Jerry Jet, Massapequa in the house. Matt, I called you twice during the season last year, and I told you that Michael Carter was too small, okay? Great third down back. Now you got Brees Hall. I told you we needed a running back. Double tight end set. They went out. They got three tight ends, okay? Power running game, Matt. Going to run the ball. Michael Carter was too small. So, uh, you know, listen, about this the division game against the Patriots on Sunday night, listen, we were 2-16 and 16 the last three years in the division. Got to beat these division opponents. Got to beat them. I don't care if we play them week one, week eight, week 12. To get anywhere, you got to beat teams in your division. Jerry Jet out. Thanks, Matt. I love it. Hope you enjoyed the victory lap there on the Jets going out and getting a uh, stud running back in the second round. Look, I think Brees Hall is going to be good. Um, I, I, I don't like, again, unless you're the Tennessee, the Tennessee Titans are really the only team that, that runs a power back into the ground the entire time. Um, and I still think Michael Carter is going to be heavily used. So it's like, I mean, Michael Carter had what, 650 roughly yards last year. Um, I don't think he's going to do that again. I th obviously, I think Brees Hall gets more, but I don't like Michael Carter is not going anywhere. He's still going to be a part of this team. He's going to be a good 1B, I think, uh, to the 1A. Uh, and as far as the divisional games, yeah, I didn't want to open the season on Sunday Night Football against the New England Patriots. Um. Do I think they could contend with the Patriots or compete with the pa Patriots this year? I sure as hell hope so. Because 0-12 in the last two years in the division is not good enough. And it's got to start there. Split with the teams you should be competitive with, at least. Can you split with Miami and New England? Buffalo is head and shoulders above you. Like, no one's going to argue that. Maybe you steal a game. Great. You go 3-3. Three and three. That'd be phenomenal. But can you split with Miami? Can you split with New England? Win your home games at least? I don't think that's asking too much. All right, let's do Blade calling up next from Idaho. Hey, Matt. It's uh, Blade from Idaho. What's up, man? And I just got done watching your um, New York Jets scheduled rumors. And uh, it really hit home when you said uh, you just like watching your 1 o'clock games. And... Uh, you just like your certain time and like I'm the exact same way over here in Idaho. They come on at 11 and I just always love the morning games. So I just watch it and then I'm done. But what just kind of hit deep with me is that this, like we cannot be scared of primetime games. We yeah, have right. to be able to go on and like show up for once. The last primetime game we won was Thursday night, Sam Darnold versus Detroit. Like, if we're going to be a relevant team, we got to come out and show like the league who we are on prime time and be able to win and not be like the Kirk cousin of the league where he can't win on prime time because the playoff games, they're all going to be, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. It's true. But anyway, it was just, it was just something that got me thinking. Just want to know what you think. Right, bye. Yeah, and like, I don't know, part of it's I'm a creature of habit. I just love the one o'clock games. It's easier. I, I like it better. It's per, it's personal preference. Um, I'm not necessarily afraid of the games. I just didn't want to open up the season in prime time. Um, later, I'm completely, I'm good with uh, Jacksonville in prime time. I think that's more than fine. Um, and I think, like you said, they should theoretically be competitive in their prime time game this year against Jacksonville. I think you should be able to compete with New England. But again, it was more so just about 
not wanting to open the year with them. But you're right. Like you can't necessarily be afraid of that, right? You can't be afraid of the prime time. I do like me some Sundays at one o'clock on CBS. The music comes in and it, ooh, it just gets me going. Let's do Jerry Jeff from Maine. Hi, this is Mean Jack calling from Maine, Maine, of course. Just wanted to inquire, what do the contract numbers of C.J. Yuzuma and Tyler Conklin look like? Because I've been told since the drafting of Jeremy Ruckert that Joe Douglas feels so confident in Ruckert that after year two he'll be able to move on from Yuzuma, Conklin, one or both. Um, and I'm just curious to know what the numbers look like. Can he get out of those contracts easily? Um, thank you. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we got Conklin right here. After year one, you're not going to want to cut him, obviously. Or, yeah, if, you're going to want to have him for at least two years because the dead money would be $7.3 million if you cut him after this year, so before 2023. But if you cut him after year two... The dead money would be just 1.68, and you'd be saving 6.75 million. As for Uzama, kind of similar story here with him. Dead money is much, much higher, though, in 2023, 11.6 million. So he's going to be sticking in year two, but only 2.3 and would save you eight that final year. So, yeah, I think it kind of goes with the mold of like sitting behind for a year or two and then you know, kind of takes that step forward from there. I think my guess would be that by the time 2024 rolls around, that's going to be Jeremy Ruckert and one of Uzama or Conklin. And based on age, my guess would be that it'd be Conklin. But who knows? We'll see. That's that's an issue for down the line. But yeah, it's not something that you want to do after just one year. After two years, completely different story though. Thank you. Good question. Uh, next up, we got Matt. From Austin. All right, cool. Let's do it. Where is he? Come on. There's my mouse. I lost it. Hey, Matt. This is also Matt calling from Austin, Texas. What's up, man? I uh, had a couple of questions for you and then like a quick comment. So I'm going to try to rattle through these kind of quick. But uh, I know you love Co Wetzel. I do too, yeah. man. I uh, just wanted to know your thoughts on his last song, April Showers, that came out. Um, the guy's just crazy talented. <laughs> uh, second question is, there's been a lot of chatter about Kwan Alexander coming in. Um, the defensive tackle from Cincinnati. Just curious, uh, do you think there are any other veteran free agents still out there that you would like to see the Jets bring in? Uh, maybe another wide receiver to fully round out the group, maybe add another safety. Um, curious your thoughts on that. And then I wanted to keep the trend going with Jets fans who aren't from New York or Jersey area. Uh, I was born and raised in Austin, Texas, and I played quarterback growing up in high school and middle school but there weren't a whole lot of Hispanic quarterbacks to really look up to. So I followed Mark Sanchez and his career sense. throughout high school and college pretty close and told myself, you know, wherever he gets drafted, that's going to be my team. Uh, he goes to the Jets, and then, you know, 10-plus uh, years later, man, I'm, I'm still here rocking with it. So, yeah, I love the show. Thanks for having me on. Um, as always, go Jets. Yeah, thank you. Very much so appreciate it. And that's a cool story. That makes that makes total sense. For Obviously, you, you latched on to, to Mark for good reason, and you stuck it out with us. We love it. Um, to go back to, so if you're listening, you're like, who the hell is Co Wetzel? So I've, I've made this pretty well known, but I really like country music, specifically Texas country, and Co Wetzel is uh, a Texas country artist. He has a lot of rock influences, so if you're someone who's maybe like, I don't want to go all the way in, uh, into country, but I'm semi interested. I think Co's a good jumping point. April Shower is a good song. Um, it, it, it's very Co Wetzel. It's it's a drinking song. It's loud. It has his his Co Wetz attitude. It's good. I'm I'm excited for it. I got to see him on tour. Um, when I came down to Houston in this past October, um, I saw Jake Asman, which was awesome, and that loops it back to the Jets for a second. But I saw uh, Flatland Calvary and Parker McCollum, who are two of my favorite country artists in a country band. Um, and they're both from uh, that that scene. So, um, yeah, I really, I'm a big fan of that kind of music. So I love it. I'm all in on it. And as for the second part, maybe like a Tart, the free safety from San Francisco. Just, I feel like that one just kind of makes too much sense, right? 
that 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 adds up. Um, maybe it, it's a wide receiver. I thought Keelan Cole. Maybe you bring him back, but obviously he signed somewhere, so that's out the window. But I, I think we'll see some veterans additions at this point. Um, and, and Quan Alexander is absolutely someone that I would add to that list because, well, they need help at that position pretty badly. Uh, let's do Eric from Florida up next. Let's do it, man. Hey, what's up, Matt? This is Eric. I'm calling from Florida. Um, and I just saw your last video about, you know, the just getting too much media attention. And listen, man, I just want to encourage you a little bit. I think definitely, uh, listen, you're entitled to your opinion, but you can have high hopes for the Jets this year. Listen, as a Jets fan, I mean, I think we, you've been a Jets fan a little bit longer than me. I think I've been a fan for about four, 13, 14 years now. Uh, so I'm used to the disappointment as well. It's not easy to get our hopes up and then have them squandered. But listen, the way that the Jets have built this team in this offseason, the fact that it's getting media attention, I think is a good thing. And I think, honestly, especially for the players, I know they don't want to listen to all that and they want to, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, media attention, they don't want to hear it so they can really focus in. But for a young team, I feel like that would, more than anything, get them excited, that the expectation is high so that they go out there and ball out. Even if they go out there and only win eight, nine games, that is such a massive step up. So it is okay to be optimistic. I think you're a little pessimistic about it, and it's completely understandable. But listen, man, I think uh, I think it's okay to be excited about this team next year. Anyway, love the show, man. Keep it up. Uh, keep your head up. I think the Jets are going to be a little bit better than you think this year. All right, man. Have a good one. Well, I still, I mean, I still got them at eight wins. I think they're going to be obviously drastically improved. I just like being the underdog. I like the, uh, the surprise team, the one where you can go in, you don't have very much expectations, but you blow people out of the water. That that's my region. That's where I like to live. Um, but I just don't want the letdown. I don't want the expectation to get too crazy. Um, where it's unreasonable. Like I think RG three being like, this team's gotta be a playoff team is, is a little bit much. For me, but I get where you're coming from, and yeah, I'm sure the team obviously loves it, and they they should, as they should. Um, they should think they go they win every game. If they don't think they go 17 and 0, I don't want them on my team. <laughs> but thank you, Eric. Very good perspective there. And let's close out with James in Jersey. What's up, Matty? Oh, James from Jersey. What's going on, baby? Uh, what up? Schedule release, of course. Again, I'm on the train where everyone's going to talk about the schedule release. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of paranoid, but that's just me being pessimistic because, you know, we're having nice things, but of course we can't have nice things. It's just, I'm all yeah. troubled, man, you know. I don't I know. That starting with the NFC North for four weeks straight is very interesting. I'm going to probably go with, I want to say maybe two out of two out of that division. I'm just throwing it up there. I was thinking about it. I might call in next week and just make do a win prediction of myself and see what your opinions are. Sure. But again, I'm just throwing darts out there and see what actually is Um It's just going to be an interesting time for this year, Matteo. If we can somehow just be competitive it's like the Lions were past year, I'll be okay with that. I mean, everyone's saying eight wins, nine wins, hell, RG3 saying ten wins for us, but, you know, I want to be competitive. I don't want to be blowouts. We definitely cannot go 0 and 6 in the. You uh, can't be going 0 and 6 in the. In yes, the sir. Division. You're right. I think you got them. No, no, that is not an option. I think you know we're still a young team, but we're growing. As long as we grow, as long as we keep setting going forward in the right direction, I think we're on a good pace. Um, just let me know what you think, man. I think at least uh, you know we go two and two for the first four weeks. We'll hit the AFC North, and uh, let's just keep setting the tone and play as Zach Wolf and make the year two jump. Thank you, and as always. Love it. I think you're on. I got two and two also in the first four. I have the wins coming against the Browns and the Steelers. Obviously the Browns are a really good team, but I think they'll be without Watson at the top of the year. Um, And then like Pittsburgh, they're not as scary with Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett. I think that's a winnable game for the Jets. Uh, And you're right, man. Don't go 0-6 in the division. Can you at least split? Give me one win against Miami and give me one win against uh, New England. That'd be... I'd be thrilled. Or even, you know what? If you get swept by Miami and by Buffalo, but you sweep New England, I'll sign up for that this year. Give me two. I think that's re- <laughs> that's completely reasonable. But yeah, let me know what you think on the full record too, by the way. That's going to do it for me. If you haven't gotten a shirt, please make sure to check it out. Link down below in the store. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary. Subscribe here if you are new. I'll talk to you next time.